This video is a demonstration of cardiovascular system examination in children. It contains a running commentary. However, I will go through the important aspects in cardiovascular system examination in pediatric practice. Firstly, it's important to um, follow a technique as students are always taught that you need to follow a technique in any examination. However, when you examine children, you may have to alter the technique as appropriate to the age and the cooperativeness of the child. So children consists of neonates, infants, toddlers, preschoolers, and so on. So at each age, their behavior could be different. They may not cooperate with the examination. So you may have to alter the technique accordingly. If the child is sleeping, you may have to do your auscultation first. But however, when you present the case, you need to present in an order. You start with general examination and then followed by the cardiovascular proper examination. You also have to know that the landmarks could be different. For an example, the cardiac apex, the landmark could be different at different ages. And also the cardiovascular parameters like pulse rate and blood pressure are age dependent. So when you examine a child, you perform a general examination first where the growth parameters are important to comment on and also it's relevant to note whether there are syndromic features because there are known syndromes that are associated with cardiovascular disorders. For an example, trisomy 21 is associated with cardiac malformations. So it's important to note any syndromic or dysmorphic feature in your patient. And also whether there are any associated defects like a cleft palate or a cleft lip which also could be associated with underlying cardiac abnormality. The other important things to note in the general examination would be the presence or absence of respiratory distress, excessive sweating and edema. Edema in older children may be visible in the ankles, whereas in infants and toddlers it may be evident in the sacral area. Well, looking for pelo, cyanosis, clubbing and plethora are of equal importance and also signs of infective endocarditis, especially if you are examining a child who is ill and febrile or having an IV cannula in situ, it will be important to look for features of infective endocarditis. When you take the pulse, Generally, radial pulse is taken, but however, in infants, it's difficult to palpate the radial pulse, so it's a common practice to palpate for brachial pulse. All peripheral pulses have to be taken, including radiofemoral and radioradial delay. And the blood pressure is the second important thing. You need to use an appropriate size blood pressure cuff for the measurement of blood pressure, otherwise, you will end up in getting a spurious reading. On the precordial examination, it's important to note whether there are any deformity or any bony deformities, any abnormal shape of the chest, and the presence of surgical scars in the anterior aspect or lateral or even posterior aspect. As I told you earlier, the, ap the location of cardiac apical impulse changes with age. In infancy, it's usually felt at the left fourth intercostal space, just lateral to the midclavicular line. By about five years, the apical impulse is felt at the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. And as a child grows more, in an older child, you would feel the apical impulse in the left fifth intercostal space, but slightly medial to the midclavicular line. Okay, now concentrate on the video to see how you proceed with cardiovascular system examination. <laughs>
which could be associated with an underlying cardiac disease like Down syndrome or Turner syndrome um, and he is afebrile to touch. Right? Now I will uh, look at some general features that are relevant to cardiovascular system. Uh, I am going to look for pallor. He is not pale. I am going to look inside the mouth to see whether there is central cyanosis and dental caries. There is no central cyanosis. Akian mana dagba lah tu diwet tu juga. Akian tu tu, I can't see any dental caries as well. Now I will look at his hands to look for clubbing and peripheral cyanosis. So at my eye level, he doesn't have clubbing, and there is no peripheral cyanosis. Uh, I will also look for peripheral stigma of rheumatic fever and infective endocarditis because that is relevant to cardiovascular system examination. So I am looking for uh, evidence of any arthritis like joint swelling uh, and subcutaneous nodules and skin rashes in favor of rheumatic fever which are not there and also feature, peripheral features of infective endocarditis like Printer hemorrhages in the nail beds and osseous nodes, small painful nodules around the small joints of hands, uh, and also Janeway lesions, lesions uh, which are erythematous lesions on the palms. So, those features are not there. I'm looking for any skin rash to be seen, so I can't see anything like that. Uh, now, I'm going to look for ankle edema. So he doesn't have evidence of ankle edema as well. So I move on to pulse examination. So I palpate the radial pulse. I take the pulse count for 30 seconds. Okay. Then I assess the pulse, uh, its rate, rhythm, character of the pulse and also uh, collapsing pulse okay now I will check for all the peripheral pulses so bilateral radial pulses I also appreciate whether there is any radio radial delay at this time and also radio femoral delay so bilateral femoral pulses and dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses. Okay. So all the peripheral pulses are present. Uh, now I need to check the blood pressure. Uh, I have to select the correct cup size for this child. So I have described how to select the cup size in the lecture. This, the cuff covers uh, about 50% of the uh, distance from the olecranon and acromion processes and the bladder should cover 80 to 100% of the circumference of the arm.
so it is at the uh, heart level Blood pressure is 90 by 60. Um, ideally, to comment on the blood pressure, we have to ch check with the blood pressure centile charts, which I have shown you in the lecture. So, now I move on to the precordial examination. So, adequate exposure of the precordium is important. So, you, I do an inspection. Uh, specifically looking for any chest deformities and surgical scars so anteriorly and on the lateral aspects and as well as at the back so I can't see any precordial scars so on palpation now I'm to going to localize the apex beat And count from the second intercostal space to locate the site of the apex beat and then I palpate uh, the cardiac areas for palpable thrills starting at the apex left lower sternal edge pulmonary area subclavicular area and the aortic area okay uh, now on auscultation, I start at the apex. So at the end, uh, I'm going to look for a presence of hepatomegaly because that could be a feature of heart failure. But for the color of the So I'm looking for the presence of tender hepatomegaly. And finally, I'm going to auscultate the lung bases to see whether there are any crepitations, which is a sign of heart failure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that's how you perform the cardiovascular system examination. At the end, you have undressed the child, put the help the child to put the t-shirt back on uh, and thank the parent and the child. Thank you.